Hi everyone, this is Tim at North and South Podcasts. Welcome to another episode. Just me speaking this week. I've had quite a few people coming on the podcast recently to talk to. And I've been doing a few more of the ones where it's just me speaking about a key theme. But I want to just talk about something quite important. Because my auntie Colette died just over a week ago in early January. And... She had been ill for quite some time, needed carers come to her home. She had an absolutely terrible time in hospital a few months ago where she was left to lie without being able to go to the toilet or have anyone help her to go to the toilet. And she had an absolute torrid time. And by speaking to her, the NHS crisis was made really, really clear to me. And she went into hospital a few days before she died and she didn't want to get in the ambulance. And it was only because the people who wanted to take her to hospital reinforced that she would be put straight into a bed and she would be treated with dignity that she agreed to go. And then a few days later, she died. I have been in hospital myself and I was in hospital in 2007 and that was when the NHS was in much much better condition but it was still tough and for a while I wasn't able to like really look after myself in the hospital just having a sip of coffee still ill by the way I've been ill for about five six weeks although it might be a second thing picked up without the first thing really going and I know there's a lot going on this winter and the NHS is under crisis anyway with Covid and the infection rates this winter being higher because people are mixing more post serious COVID. But when you're in hospital and you can't look after yourself, go to the toilet and feed, etc., which has happened to me once before, it's absolutely horrible. There's very little dignity and there's very little proper care. People who go into hospital who are vulnerable and who are really ill, it's not a nice time for them. And I, in my opinion, you should be getting treated as well as possible. And collect the way she was treated in hospital a few months ago. It was an absolute disgrace. So I just first of all wanted to say, Auntie Colette, I miss you. Thank you for the wonderful gifts you got for me son this Christmas with my uncle Frank. And you deserved a bit better in your final years than the care you got from the health system in this country. My uncle Frank was absolutely fantastic as a carer and Colette, you showed a lot of resilience. I'm going to miss you. But I think now you're reunited with your son, Paul, who tragically died 20 years ago at a very young age. And Frank lives on and you and Paul are with Frank always. So Uncle Frank will rally round with you as a family and uh, I'll do all I can for you over the next few months and years. But um, I just wanted to say really how angry Colette's experience is with the health services and the care services and local council provision or lack of. I was just angry with that and it's not something anyone should go through, particularly when they are vulnerable. Saying that, Frank was absolutely fantastic. And there was a lot of great care and a lot of great treatment for Colette, but she did deserve much better at times from that system. I also want to say that the Stokes believe in being mindful of the fact that at some point it will be the last time that you do something. And I've listened to a few podcasts on this and I've read a bit of Stoicism. And Stoicism was a branch of ancient Greek philosophy that I've spoken about on other podcasts. That relates to the idea of dealing with things with equanimity, not getting too wound up, not getting too distracted or upset or emotional about things, about being stoic, particularly when you've got a lot of people in the background talking and making noise while you're trying to do a podcast. And not getting wound up by things and just dealing with things calmly. Don't get too excited by the highs. And don't get too downhearted with the lows. Just try and keep like a steady, if you like, middle path, which was what was advocated by the Buddha and Buddhism as well. And I remember Lee Sharp, he used to play for Manchester United, who I didn't like for many years because he was playing under 
the United team under Fergie that had a lot of clout and power and were very successful, but I didn't particularly like the way that the team behaved. And Lee Sharp was like a left bar, bit of a party animal, I think. And he used to celebrate his goals like mad. And he was getting interviewed once, and someone said, like, what's with the goal celebrations? And he said, you never know the last time you'll score a goal. And it always stuck with me that, because I used to celebrate my goals when I played football. I no longer play, I might play again the odd time here and there. But try and enjoy each and every moment and each and every day, because there'll be a lot of stuff that you do that may be for the last time, and you won't know it. When I was seriously ill in 2007, I actually slept in my bed in my old home for the last time. And I never slept in it again. I went to Scotland and then I went straight into hospital when I came back from Scotland and then the house was sold, etc. And I never knew that that was going to be the last time I would sleep in that really comfortable bed. There may be people in your life who you'll never see again, people from your youth or people who you don't see that often, maybe relatives and friends who live quite far away, etc. And someone from my primary school and secondary school class died at the end of 2021. I hadn't seen this person for years and I just thought, you know, lovely person, just lost contact with her, but I never knew the last time I saw her that that would be the last time. And it's just about appreciating and being mindful of all the little things that you do every day and the big things and all in between. Try to appreciate them, to have that attitude of gratitude and to live in the present as much as possible. And thinking back to my recent podcast with Paul Cope, be asking yourself as you're going through to through the day, who's on the mic? Who which sub personality of me is on the mic? Is it the negative ones or the positive ones or the neutral ones? Try and get as many neutral and positive sub-personalities of you on the mic. Don't get angry. Stay calm and do with whatever life throws at you. Doesn't mean you're not assertive, that you don't defend yourself, that you haven't got strict boundaries at times. But stay calm and stay equanimous. So, Auntie Colette, rest in peace. Everyone else out there, appreciate all those little things that you do that may be the last time that you do them. And there was a culture review recently I did with David Moorhead where I spoke about the last time that you might do something. And we spoke about a book by David Vushnarevich called Closer to the Knives. And it's very much an existential book. This was a gentleman who died of AIDS in 1992. And he was a, an artist from New York. There's a chapter in his book closer to the knives where he's watching a bull fight and he's describing what's happening he's seeing mortality right in front of him and he says at the end of each paragraph smell the flowers while you can and it's since become a little bit of a motto of mine and i also use those words at the funeral of my uncle anthony when he died several christmases ago it was now about how we need to appreciate what we've got when we've got it and not get too caught up in the craziness of modern life and to not listen to that monkey brain, the constant chattering, low self-esteem monkey brain that's constantly chattering away at you. Yeah, it can help you to not make mistakes and to be wary of things and to be suspicious of situations, but it can also dominate your life if you if you're not careful. So who's on the mic? Is that negative monkey? on the mic or the better version to you on the mic as well. One of the things I've mentioned before is the idea of a gratitude journal and each day writing down things that you're grateful for and even better, bringing that into your, your daily consciousness, acknowledging that kind of gratitude or moment as you're actually going through the day itself. It can be wonderful. So rest in peace, Auntie Colette. Let's not take second, third, fourth or fifth best rate healthcare systems and care systems. Let's do something about them, folks. And appreciate all the things that you do every day because one day you won't be doing them. Take it easy, everyone. As you know, if you want to come on to talk about well-being, politics, history, financial survival, making positive change in your life, creativity, come on. Please subscribe, like, support, share with one person. 
Follow me on both Spotify and YouTube. If you want to get involved, let me know. You can come and join the team. As you may have heard me speak about recently, I've set up a community interest company to do podcasting in the community. If you want to get involved with that and help me with that, that's good. Particularly working with people whose voices aren't always heard. And if you can give a small donation, the price of a cup of coffee once a month, please check the podcast notes coffee.com details are there today everyone you meet just try and be that little bit nicer with them just try to be 10 20 percent more positive in your interactions today and as you're getting in the car or closing the door or standing up or speaking to someone just have that little flittering of consciousness of appreciation of gratitude to experience that moment see you later